So now, we're right here, he's got the underhook on me. So again, he's got a good shoulder trap, which is key. The one thing I never, ever want to see anybody do, if they have a guy underhook them, is try to lift their arm up over here. It's terrible. It's gonna give him my whole body here. I don't really have anything, right? All he's gotta do is drop his elevation and I lose his arm, all right? Just bend your knees. Rip! And not, oh no, shoot, I lost it. So anytime that happens. So the first thing that you try to accomplish when someone underhooks you, and it should be automatic, all right? Let's say we're out here, whatever I reach, he gets the underhook on me, boom. The first thing is this. This should be automatic. My hand comes right in to the chest, okay? I try to bring it up as high as I can, but notice when I bring it up, I'm clamping my elbow to my own body, all right? So now when he tries to maneuver his arm in there, it doesn't really work because I got it trapped, all right? And now I use the same principle now as jacking him up for the, with the underhook, I use it on the overhook now. So once I clamp his arm, see I can start to get him hopping on that foot, all right? So the very first thing you should always do, regardless of what happens, as soon as we get in here, he underhooks, boom, I, right away, I immediately whizzer and clamp, right? Because even if I whizzer, he'll drop his shoulder low and get up higher in my underhook. See now, he's got a high underhook and it's harder for me to clamp down on that, which we'll get into, all right? But first and foremost is prevention. So obviously, I blew it already because I gave him an underhook. But, so your elbows would be low, but every time I go to move and he takes advantage of it, I clamp, all right? And I clamp his arm into me tight, all right, really tight. So I'm right here. This fist can start to push out a little bit, all right? Or it can pull in, right? And what I'm trying to do is get him loaded up on this foot, all right? If he bases his body weight back, I got him loaded up on that foot. All right, that's my goal, because I don't want him to run behind me. The more he runs behind me, the more what? He's getting body lock, okay? So as he starts to run behind me, I'm loading him up on that foot, all right? Loading him up on that foot. The second thing is, is I'm here, when I cut this fist here, remember we talked about as with the underhook, if he has a left underhook, he hard steps to get the right hand in, all right? So now I have a much worse position. So what I want to do is I want to put a blocker here. So when he hard steps, you see what happened? This became like a barrier. He wasn't allowed, when he hard steps, he wants to be able to get that shoulder clamped into me. All right? So when he hard steps, this hand blocks him out right here. Boom, hard clamp. The other thing is if I keep this here, and he tries to walk towards me and he feels it, and he stills, man, I wanna, I wanna get his wrist, whatever, he grabs a hold of my wrist because that's what he's supposed to do, right? So he's hanging on tight, and I'm trying to pull away, so I go like this. So I let him hang on, and I pull, all right? So as he's hanging on tight, making him bounce on that foot, I pull his arm to get him bouncing, all right? Now, once I'm here, obviously we have trips and whatever else, right? Because as I'm pulling him forward, getting him on that foot, first one, my near foot can go. Hardly any energy to get him to go over. Why? Because the throw has already been accomplished by his positioning. Look where his shoulders are, all right? His shoulders are right there. So all I basically have to do is step forward and lift a little bit and he's going for a ride, all right? Second one is when I'm right here, okay? He steps hard or whatever. I just block his foot out right there. Hardly have to touch it. Remember the, the problem on a foot sweep a lot of times? Is people try to sweep. Don't have to, right? When I'm pulling him heavy on that foot, I just block him out. Just block it. Just block the foot. That's all you gotta do. The upper body does the rest, all right? If I don't even want to in, bring in my body, all right? I don't want to bring in my lower body. You can do everything with the upper body. And again, look at this is interchangeable. I have the grip, he has the grip. I don't really care as long as there's a grip, all right? 
So you go. See what happens? Because he does all the work for me. So I act as if I'm trying to get my hand free to really get him to grip hard. And I go. See what happens to his whole body? It goes flying. Good. So. Reverse the rolls for a second. Let's say, whatever, or I got overhook, he's got underhook. He goes like this, and then he pulls his hand away. You see what's happening? Same principle will happen. So anytime I feel a guy yanking his wrist, I just let go of it. I never hold on to it. He yanks, I go, oh, cool. Because I'll pull my own body by holding on tight, I'll pull myself. Look what I just did, planted heavy with this foot. Anytime I plant heavy, ugh, that means I, it was an emergency stop to get balance, all right? I had to do it. So anytime I feel him pull the wrist, just let it go, right? So that would be the same thing here. So if all of a sudden he's grabbing my wrist, he feels me try to torque it, he lets go. Now see, he doesn't lose position as much. Important. A lot of people want to grab. That's why I always set it up first by trying to. Then I go. Okay, and again, foot, foot, foot. Just as a blocker, all right? Turn a little bit, block it, block. Any number of ways to block that foot out once it hops on it. Okay, that's with tight underhook. Turning my body. See what I'm doing? I'm putting the weight on his foot. Last one. Again, interchangeable. Pull. So this time, as soon as I pull, and I'm doing a lot with this arm here, as soon as I pull, just step on his foot to drop him down. And I really like holding the underhook here, because when we land, See what I'm doing? I drop here. I put the weight down by his wrist. And I start working in a, uh, an arm bar. If he bends his arm, it doesn't matter because it, now it just gets stuck in there. Now I got two hands stuck. Boing, 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 boing. All right, I got two hands stuck in there now. You know, I'm a real huge proponent on using your own body to help you out a lot, right? So anytime I'm here and I feel his arm come towards his chest or anything like this, I'll drop on it. Now I got at least one shot for free. And for him to get that out, he's gonna have to buck and jerk and do whatever else. But it's a lot of work. Oh, so he pulled his elbow up, but look at my chest holds his wrist still. All right? Hold it still. So I'm using my body to help me all the time instead of being on my knees. It's so easy for him to, to make space now, right? And I don't want him to create space. Remember, the whole bottle, the whole game, regardless of your top, bottom, feet, it's about space and weight distribution. So if I'm here, got the elbow stopping his hips, got his hand trapped, so when he's trying to shrimp or do whatever, It makes it tough for him. And I'm not being aggressive at all with this. I'm just laying on him right now, trying to get him heavy. Same principle when I'm up on the feet. He gets the underhook. Oh, look at that. Oh, that was by purpose or by accident. I always step on the feet. Right away, I got to pass. You see? So I go like this. What I did, I got heavy on his shoulder. Right on his ankle right away. All right? Now he brings that leg up to do something. See, I got a trap. So I can go over it. Trap it. Do whatever you can to stop his ankles and feet from coming up because he needs that knee barrier.